Is this heaven? No, it's a podcast. Welcome to the Field of Geeks podcast. Welcome to episode 141 of the Field of Geeks podcast. I'm Josh. I'm Steve. I'm Megan. How's it going, guys? Good. We recover well from Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. We went to Cracker Barrel. No, you didn't. Yeah. That's what? where you went for Thanksgiving? Yeah, we were supposed to go to my brother's in Omaha, and the weather prevented us from going. Oh. And Claire and Terrell were at Terrell's family's. And out of town, so it was just Jennifer and I, and we went to Cracker Barrel. That was open, huh? Yeah. <laughs> was, was everybody open. there? Who doesn't? It was crowded. I was surprised, really? but yeah, I would rather have had leftovers. What did you eat? I had roast beef, mashed potatoes, gravy. Were you by the fire? No, thank God. <laughs> You'd be sweating. It's just too hot. But yeah, I mean, it was. It was it lunchtime, dinner time? Yeah, it was like around, I don't know, one or two. We went, and then. um. So what'd you have for dinner? Nothing. Roast beef? No. Oh. So Thursday night, mm-hmm. I'm like, I need a new Xbox controller. And I know Walmart was open. I'm like, so like, can we just run and get one real fast? It'd be great. Blah, blah. Long weekend. I was going to play my Xbox. People were starting early. We get to Walmart. Yeah, they open at five. No, this is Thursday night, sweetheart. Oh, like at 10, 10 o'clock, 1030. Sorry. And there's 200 people in Walmart. It was ridiculous. Oh. Yeah. And it's Walmart. And it's Walmart. I mean, are we talking about Black Friday yeah. already? Yeah. How was um, your Thanksgiving first? It was fine. I ate food. Yeah. And then I went shopping. Yeah. That um, night or next yeah. day? Yeah. Yeah. We started at five. So we went to Target first. How was that? Not as bad as you would think. So I love Target. We live in Iowa, obviously. So people are a lot kinder. And we don't really have all of those... Trampling, trampling issues. We're all very respectful and say sorry a lot because that's what we do. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Walmart might be different though. That might be. It was 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 bad. bad. It was just busy. I also went to Walmart too. Yeah. But Target's definitely more polite. You definitely. There's one lady who made a comment. She's like, "I wish I could just wear a sign on my back that said I'm sorry, so she didn't have to say it all the time." Yeah. She was choking someone. We're pathetic, aren't we? (laughs) We're just so apologetic. We're not very assertive. We're just pathetic. Actually, we're assertive. We're not aggressive. No, we're not aggressive. Uh, So we went to Target. Target was definitely more um, pleasant. Uh, Had to take advantage of the Google Home stuff that was going on because that stuff was really cheap. Um, and then the Xbox One was also cheap. Nice. So we got that. Wasn't and then, it like bundled with a game or something? Yes. So it was one ninety nine with a game and a controller. Nice. What's the game? Um, I don't know which pack he got. I'd have to Is go it Call of Duty look. something? Or? No, there, oh. that was one of the options. Okay. There were several different options that you could pick from. Gotcha. And I can't remember the game that came with his. Um, and then we got a couple of Google Homes. So there's the Google Nest, which was like 29. We got a Chromecast. We got the little hub. I mean, we got everything. Nice. We're Googled out right now. <laughs> and then Walmart, actually, when we were there, they were actually slicing, slicing. They were slashing prices. So um, they had a huge... The customers were? <laughs> no, the management was. So the employees were kind of confused because they were like, oh, this... Uh, 150 uh, Lego set should be $20, but it kept saying 10 Well, that's because management had gone through and slashed it from 20 to 10 Whoa. And um, so they were, like, trying to cross it out and put 20 and then they're like, no, no, it's supposed to be $10. So you could have gotten 150 Legos for 10 bucks. Wow. Which is, we should have waited because my daughter is getting a Lego table for Christmas. Oh. And so we got two sets of Legos on Amazon, which was like 50 bucks together. If we just would have waited, we could have gotten two of those for 20 bucks. Jeez. That's amazing. Damn. Yeah, the we went like day after, uh, like, I don't know, nine in the morning. And I just go for the movies. That's all I yeah. really care about. That's the best deals. And yeah, I did see some other things. I was like, wow, that's really cheap. So, yeah, I got a couple games. I got Spider-Man. Oh, nice. Uh, PS4. Yeah. I think it was like 14 bucks maybe, from Best Buy, which I'm, I got to wait for it to ship. Because I, I, I did things online, so I wonder if the controller you wanted, 
if you would have been able to do it online yeah. to buy it. Well, they're normally like fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah. And I didn't even know it was on sale. But we go to the register, it's oh, thirty nine just... ninety nine. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, Well, oh, not bonus, I guess, you know. So But Walmart's the way they did their movies pissed me off. They put it in like a big uh, box thing and, and then there was a giant line to get to it oh, when we people... went. Target's was so much better, although they the one I went to, like one side was super narrow. Like yeah. you couldn't really navigate too well. Uh, but yeah, Walmart's like, by the time I got there, everything was mixed in and they had those color coded price sheets on the whole, all the boxes, but they were for video games. Oh, oh So then they had to dig out one for the movies. We had one copy with shitty tape that would not stick. So people kept like throwing it and you grab it. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. Chaos. Walmart messed up. Yeah. Go to Target. Target's Shocker. better. Target. Target is better. It, it is. is. It, it was is. definitely easier to navigate in Target. And the people are friendlier. I, yeah. yeah, and you feel like you're Walmart still clean listening. when you come out. They should be, and you know what? It's cleaner. Yes, yes, it is. It is. They just revamped it too, and mm -hmm. I see so many. I want to get a big TV, but bigger TV eventually. I saw like an 82 inch TV being wheeled out. I'm like, my God! By the time I can finally get another one, it's probably gonna be up to 100. I'm gonna get an 80 inch TV. Yeah, hell yeah. You're gonna. You want one? Oh yeah. So yeah, you know, I don't know if Walmart. The training is probably vastly different between Target and Walmart. Oh, I'm sure. Oh. I mean, I think Walmart probably has an actual course on, this is how you only marginally give a shit, yeah. you know, but you don't work too hard. Don't, <laughs> you know, if you see something laying on the floor, it's got a three hour leave it, <laughs> you know, so I don't know. It's and if you terrible. lose track of that time, just reset the clock. Just reset, <laughs> you know, err on the side of leaving it on the floor. Yeah. Did you see, I, I think it was you who shared that video of a Black Friday somewhere else where people were trying to get those TVs. They didn't even unwrap the thing. Yeah. So I was like watching that and thinking, you guys are just, you guys are all purchasing broken televisions at this point. Yeah. Because they like crashed down. Oh, yeah. And they still took them. Oh, they don't care. It's like the worst <laughs> of humanity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at least like where I went, all of that stuff was already unwrapped mm -hmm. and out on pallets where you would just, they were next to each other. Nothing was stacked like that. They've had, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, there's some videos where people roll out things too soon, and then they try to take it back, uh, and people like not having it, like nope, grabbing it, nuts. Yeah. My wife worked at Walmart like back in Black Friday Prime, you know, before I even knew about it. But yeah, they they broke glass getting in to, to the doors. They broke really the, yeah here. It's Southside. Oh, Southside. Southside. Yeah. Side. <laughs> that Go makes figure. Sense. Yeah. That's not real, I Iowa. I like how we were all like, oh, Southside, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but, you know, everything, for like two years now, I've been annoyed. Like, Thanksgiving morning, I want to show my kids the parade, you know? The yeah. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Every network's too busy, you know, promoting their own shit. They don't really show it, you know? It's mm. like in the backdrop. But yes, you can kind of There's see. no focus, and there's commercials and commercials. So I had to go on yeah. YouTube Live. I was just getting frustrated. Like NBC, they have the Broadway performances, which is fine, but we're here for the parade. I want to show my kids the floats. And yeah. They never show them, it seems. As so. a, the youngest party member here, I'm going to be honest and go out and say that I never gave a shit about that. Really? And my family also wanted me to have that experience. Did you care? No. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like and I'm old. You are old. You it's know? like a short attention, though, to like three minutes like this is cool and then i guess it's like yeah i'm, I'm done with it i think that's how my kids were when i put on youtube right it's a sign of how the times have changed maybe it's yeah. more of an electronic world like if you're going to show them yeah. something with gaming like my daughter's five yeah and it's all about the games right now mm -hmm. yeah. i mean she even asked for a cell phone for christmas and i said no we're not oh wow not doing that but I, didn't, I didn't get mine till i was 18 yeah i think mine was 16 but right yeah. and it was like the old nokia yeah, oh, very, yeah, I had a little. Yeah. yeah I had Caller D on it. It's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> they didn't have them when I was that age. No, they, they <laughs> had the box phone in the vehicle when you were that old. Well, you had one in your car, didn't you? Yeah. Huh? I uh, did not. Ah. <laughs> oh, you activated my Apple Watch that said you're almost there. Keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We'll get your steps in. <laughs> But the cool That's thing funny. about that morning was the E.T. commercial they had. It came out of nowhere. I didn't know they were doing it, but they mm. did. Basically, E.T. comes back, and Elliot's got a family now, and they have a little... Yeah, I they, saw a screenshot of it. It's, like it's, it's really still, cool. Yeah. I 
don't remember what they're advertising, don't care, but yeah. it's pretty much just like the first movie uh, in a short short film type mm-hmm. of thing, but it was really cool. I was like, man, this would kind of be neat if, yeah. they, if they did that again, but yeah, it was, I was really surprised by that. I don't know if uh, Spielberg, he must have okayed that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he did. did Counted he, his he money. Go home? He did go home, yeah. so he, he must have found a way back. back. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. And then he had to go home again. I don't think they're shipping Reese's pieces to his planet yet. <laughs> yeah, so that's why he came. he came. He ran out and came back. It's like take me to this. Went Costco. to Costco, right? Got a big giant. <laughs> got a pallet of Reese's pieces. He's at Costco. I'll be right here. So many commercial ideas that just pop into my head. <laughs> yeah, well, we should we should do some commercials. That'd be. I don't know why we're not an advertisement. Or at least making fake commercials. Yes. There's an idea. I'd love to do that. Sure. You know what I thought about doing? This is a, a little breaks. off topic, but um, the you know those compilations of like angry people and they're throwing things at each other and arguing. Yeah. I thought about doing voiceovers to those and yeah. making it about ridiculous stuff. Yeah. You know? Like not the stuff you get mad at, even though that's ridiculous anyways. But like just changing it and your shirt it. is dumb. <laughs> yes. You know, people, right? Yeah. yeah. Can I do that? Yeah. Yes, you can. And then you know, like. like not using harsh language at all. No. Yeah. Something yeah. that's so absurd to the, what yeah. you're seeing on the screen. Like peanut butter liquor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We could do you that. sang in the wrong key at church. <laughs> you know, and someone's getting beaten repeatedly. <laughs> it was C minor. Right. <laughs> we could totally do that. I think we fun. should do that. Yeah. I think I think we're gonna we could have some yeah. fun with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. We should have some more meetings and just talk about ideas. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I, I definitely want to get into the voice um, over type stuff. I've got some ideas. Uh, hopefully, get them uh, done someday. Right. So. I know. <laughs> That's the whole thing is about execution. It'd be some original content, you know. Rather than us talking, we'd actually do other yeah. things. So <laughs> All is... ideas, no execution. Yeah, yeah. Well... You know, we all Here's have my jobs. Idea book. All right. If Three only this was our full time job, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. And we got paid good right. some money. I mean, as much as we talk about McDonald's on here, I'm surprised they're just not throwing yes. money our way. Yeah. Well, since we're on the, the topic, uh, how was it this morning? It was you guys good. Both had McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, it was on good. Par. I took the egg off per usual. Yes. But um, it was good. A mental note. Just tell him to leave the egg. I, in I the will next time. I'm sorry. Water thing that it comes from. <laughs> The brine water. See, and, and what's funny is I got a sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin minus the egg. Yeah. Good. Really, you can request that. Oh, yeah. I need to do that. Sometimes I want the muffin. I don't want the biscuit because the biscuits are kind of hard. So I wonder if I could just say, hey, put it on a muffin for me. Yeah. And those are good. I'd probably say, screw you. Pull around. No. It's McDonald's. Yeah. They give you whatever you want. Because Burger King does it. They have to do it. They want to ensure that you're loving it. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> In pursuit of that goal. Is that still the slogan? I, I've lost Steve. track. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it is or not. <laughs> it's in my head. Yeah. I might go there after this. I'm not sure. There you go. They had those throwback Happy Meals for a quick sec. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I only got one toy from there. For my kids. Uh, the frozen toy? It wasn't the toy I wanted. Oh. No, it was a throwback <laughs> toy. Oh. It's like when they made like cooler toys. They're like, yeah. hey, oh. remember these? Do you remember the Pokemon gold-plated... Um, Things that you could get. Uh-uh. No, that's I just don't. my generation. Probably. No, I was never a Pokemon, but I had uh, little Muppets. Um, they had like holiday dolls when I was a kid. They had some cool shit when I was a kid. And uh, I'm trying to think what else they had. I think Josh figures. just may have openly admitted that he collected dolls. When I was a kid, Stuck they had animals. rusty nails and uh, <laughs> vials full of polio. <laughs> And he that has a no whole sense. set. Was it a Black Friday deal? Set. Black Friday? It was a Black Plague deal. Black Plague. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a poll on our Facebook page. Lately, a lot of big-time directors are kind of bitching about <clears throat> all these comic book movies and how right. they're taking away their chances of making films and all this, uh, you know, because it took Scorsese years to get the Irishman off the ground. Yeah. Um, all goes back to Scorsese. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it kind of started the trend of yeah, bashing. Right. And Coppola was like, just got right on it. Right. Like, Dude, go back to your vineyard. Drink some more <laughs> wine. Um, so anyway, we did a poll because I was just curious, like, uh, you know, does everyone think these comic book films are, you know, taking away the 
the profits to these all these more artsy films. Um, yeah. And we got a resounding that said no. So, hmm. yeah. It's, you know, it, it's original ideas. I mean, you know, yes. yeah, of course, comic films are huge. I mean, they're in cruise control as far as franchise modes and, and all that kind of stuff. But they're making money, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's... Uh, you're limited by your imagination and, and how you execute. You know, I mean, it's... Well, we can only see so many gangster films before we... You know, get... <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, Scorsese himself borrowed from movies he saw as a child or as a young man. And <clears throat> that's just what these comic book films are. They've always been... There's always a, a hero, a villain. Like, right. it's all related, really. It's just this is a different art form. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just tired of the... Uh, it just, to me, goes back to the whole notion of comics are not important. And, you know, it's just like when Stan Lee died, how Bill Maher... Oh, trash it completely, yeah. just was like, that's so disrespectful. Like, you know, a lot of people felt like they could escape in these comics. And it was, you know, it was more entertaining to them than whatever else there was. Just like right now, these movies. Like, yeah. people want to... It's expensive to go to the movies, and people want kind of a guarantee they're gonna they're gonna enjoy it. Money, right. yeah. So. Well, yeah, you know, and I know we'll talk about it later. But with Knives Out, mm -hmm. I did not want to go in any way, shape, or form, and my wife wanted to go, and of course, yes, honey, <laughs> we'll go. Oh my God, I don't want to go. Well, it just shows like not everyone wants the comic book films. Like your wife was like, right. let's go see this one. Yeah, so she dragged you to that, and you, and I ended up loving it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah, so more of that, right? More of that. But I see some independent films. You know, I saw The Lighthouse, and, mm -hmm. which I think it seemed to me like a lot of people saw The Lighthouse. It just had that maybe because of Robert Pattinson. He's you know in the headlines for the Batman, which yeah. is a comic book movie. Yeah. <laughs> see, <laughs> you can't escape. Chris Evans was in Knives Out. He was in Knives Out, and Jamie Lee Curtis from uh -huh. Halloween and. All those other great films. And Who others. Had... Don Johnson. Don Johnson. Yeah. Who was the female that's in it that I would have watched it for? Mm, Tony Collette was in it. Yeah. She's done some... She's a phenomenal actress. Yes, she is. How do you think of her name? She's Michael an older Shannon? actress. Michael Shannon? Gosh, what's yeah. her name? Yeah. Zod? Yeah. She was in True Lies. What is her name? Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. Yeah. yeah. You already said it. Oh, well, yeah. I, I... Ears closed. <laughs> no, Knives Out. That's <laughs> that's a sequel. Ears, Ears closed. closed. Makes you wonder though, will there be a sequel? Because I'm sure it's going to make. Some I don't think so. Big, big change. Yeah. Well, you know how they just. I think it should be like the modern version of a Clue movie, where it's <laughs> kind of a. I think I can see it being a cult classic. Yeah. So sure. who did it? I'm not saying. <laughs> Spoiler free. Is it one of those movies where? Um... Do you want me to point to who did it? No. Um, is it because I'm gonna go see it? Is okay. it one of those movies where you think you know who did it and then you were completely off base a couple of times? Honestly, or for I, you, I'm usually really good at yeah. guessing these things. Um, it Sixth Sense, the whole Bruce Willis thing, yeah. really. You know, the second he got shot and he's laying on the bed and the camera's panning up, I lean over to Jennifer. I'm like. <laughs> and she's He's like, dead, Jim. She hits me really hard, way harder than that. And and yeah, he was dead, you know. And I'm like, oh, I blew that one. You know, I should just <laughs> shut up. But with this movie, I yeah. I had no idea. I mean, I was going into the you know final twenty minutes of the movie. I'm like, how are they going to do this? I don't know who. Yeah. What you is know, it? The I mean, person that you would have least suspected. Not least. She, kind of in the in the. Room. It was in the running, yeah. Yeah. I mean, at first, you know, they kind of almost make it like it's really obvious, and then it's like, oh no, but it's not obvious. It's kind of like that movie that Adam Sandler and and Jennifer Aniston were in. We did see that one. It's also got a clue vibe to it, yeah. where you don't know who. Which I think they're making a sequel to that one. Really? I think so. I'd yeah. see it. Yeah. Murder on the Orient Express. That, that was did you feel too. like that wrapped up pretty well? I thought it did good. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I love that book, show. Right? Yeah. So that had some material. And there was an old movie. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, but that was a fun movie, too, I thought. Yeah, I swear, when I saw the first... Another non-comic film. Right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Some some get through the, the gates, you know. I'm ready for uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's next film. So whenever he's ready. Whichever film that is. Yeah. He's going to... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is he's going to burn the Amazon, is that uh -huh. what you're talking about? 
<laughs> well, he does do a lot of National Geographic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised by those results. Yeah, I, relax here. I just think that's a stupid argument. I think it's just kind of like a kind of like crybabies. It seems like really just to blame comic book films because Marvel's done something that many haven't. You know, with the the whole uh, right chronological thing. I think. Uh, well, like look at the Joker. You know that that was something. Is it true they're thinking about uh-huh. making a... T- I mean, I would see it. I was... Wow. I think after I... making a billion dollars now almost, it's I'm not a surprised. foregone conclusion. only thing is, is like that movie is all about him becoming the Joker. So where do you go from there? Right. Were people... You're going you're to have to touch Batman, right? You have to. You have to. Yeah. Were people upset by the fact that it gave... Especially looking at where we're sitting as a country... Just looking at him more as the start of a of of a revolution, um, and then there was a loss, a lot of um, elements of mental illness in there too, mm-hmm. which I mean really plays on how our society looks at people who struggle with mental illness. Absolutely. Now. I mean, you really don't look at him as a villain in this film at all. You look at somebody who really struggled and wasn't getting the help he needed. And now he's he's in a bad way. Like society created him, yeah. yeah. By their by them not caring. Yes. So he he had a voice. It really and... had like a V for Vendetta feel for it. For yeah, me, it was bit. very much a sympathetic view of. And now it doesn't condone what he did. No, no. Yeah, you know, the movie doesn't condone it, but at the oh. same time, it shows how our society doesn't give any craps about mental illness at all. You're, you know? you're with him until the point where he just totally snaps. And right. Yeah. Like, I'm with him like... when he shot the first guy on the subway. Yeah. Right. I was with him there. Yeah. He was getting assaulted and right. could have been killed himself. But then track the other guy down. But then tracking the other guy down, <laughs> running him down, we've crossed Poor a guy. line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it gets worse from there, obviously. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I mean, he, he snapped and... Mm. and and that kind of thing can happen. And to be lied to your whole life. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, he's already a basket case. Yes. He gets that bomb dropped on him. But here's the other possibility is maybe Thomas Wayne did alter stuff. There's that out there, too, which is... Yeah. Maybe that's their idea for a sequel. Is that I like fan there's feedback a, that like probably. maybe yeah. there's a lot out there that you can kinda... interpret so much. It's just yeah. right. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy theories, but I don't know. I think um, yeah, I think that needs that argument needs to stop, and so yeah. does the whole you know stereotypical. Not to say it doesn't exist, but you know, quickly we'll talk about Charlie's Angels, how that bombed, and Elizabeth Banks. Uh, she made. Comments before it coming out, I believe, saying basically if no one shows up, this is just a sign mm-hmm. of male masculinity, and which is just not true. We've had superhero females, yeah, forever. I mean, like Wonder forever, Woman, but yeah, Ripley, Sarah Connor, you know, which she just came back, yeah. But again, it's like you got to make it worth seeing, and yeah, yeah, a Don't... bad product doesn't mean. Doesn't do you, equate to sexism. Are we on this topic? Sure. Yep. Um, do you think some of that's a PR, like a, a studio, like let's cover up if this bombs, we're going to use this yes. as our yeah. out? Yeah, oh, very, sure. very much. Yeah. It has to be because, mm-hmm. I mean, you were talking um, before the show, the previous series, entire female cast, it did very well. I grew up with that. I mm-hmm. loved that. So I almost wonder if that's a PR stunt. It has to be because it was it was a television series. It wasn't three men in that series, Mm, and that was a successful theory or series. I grew up with it. Yes, (laughs) I grew up with the original in the seventies. Okay, well, I grew up with Drew Barrymore and Lucy. Yeah, so it's not a new concept, really, of female. Led no, characters. it's like, not. It's not like Ghostbusters where right. that excuse, excuse, and I can't believe I'm saying this, may have been valid. Mm. You can't use that here. Right. No. Well, there's been books. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there. It's like, yeah, yeah. Just make a good film. You did know? I just play on the generational gap that we have here? You sure did. You're welcome. Well done. <laughs> I don't remember how. Old. I think I was like. God, I may have been in middle school when those came out. Oh, oh. When you did they know. come out? When did the Do first? We know. Two thousand. I think. Yeah, I think the first one was two thousand, so, and then second yeah. one was like twenty th- or two thousand three. I think. Because I was two. in middle school when I was in two thousand, and then I went to high school in two thousand and one. Wow. You're welcome. I was already everybody. gone. <laughs> I left the year prior. <laughs> and I graduated in two thousand and six. You were twelve in two thousand. 
That's crazy. If I graduated in 2000, and, oh, do you know what year I was born? Um, well, 88. Yeah. I'll tell everybody that. <laughs> you know that out. <laughs> what? <laughs> we'll do a poll. That was the year I graduated high school. <laughs> you graduated high school in 88? Oh, my God. My mother was just giving birth. How funny. Yeah, the, she had was. the mullet in the whatever t-shirt. Whatever was popular then. No mullets. <laughs> Who shot JR? When I was in sports. We couldn't have long hair. What's the dollar amount that that it's brought in thus far? I mean, I'm sure you've. Of Charlie's Angels? Yeah. Eleven dollars and thirty two cents. <laughs> one, the one person worldwide. No. Who went and saw it? No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I just wondered. Oh, the one person. <laughs> I thought you were referring to me. I actually wanted to see it, but the problem is there's so many movies out right now. I don't have the time. I look at IMDb ratings. I don't look mm-hmm. at. Rotten Tomatoes. No, I don't like Rotten I mean, tomatoes. IMDb is people that go out there that have seen the film. It's just... Are you ready for this? Yeah. yeah. IMDb ranks it... Ranks it... Ranks it. 3.9 yeah. out of 10. Ooh. Yeah. And that, that's less than the uh, 2000 ones. Mandalorian is an example. 9.1 out of yeah. 10. Ooh, I didn't know Elizabeth Banks was the director, yeah. so no yeah. wonder she's... And she's in the movie, too. Wow. That's low. Uh, and Rotten Tomatoes isn't uh, 55%. Not that, you know, I would go off of that either, but 3.9. Well, they've been shown to be, like, bias. Oh, yeah. Rotten Tomatoes. That's, not that's a proven scenario. They're not dependable at all. I've learned that ever since BVS. It's just not... They have an agenda, and... Yeah, IMDb is a better way to go. Some of the reviews on this, uh, just to kind of go over some of the titles, not that we want to bash this but um another worthless reboot would be one of the ways that it was described um if we're looking at just general people feedback people yes. feedback i don't huh. know regular feedback average people from the average from the joe. average joe but you're having a stroke for a second i i did hit my head not that long ago so just put him a griddle on it i don't know but some of the critics reviews on this aren't i mean not that bad. Um, I've heard it was decent, but the action scenes were great because Elizabeth Banks has never directed action scenes. Yeah. So interesting. But it doesn't really matter what the critics say because what matters is what what the people are willing to pay to see it. And sure, I don't see that here. So though I'm seeing some critic re- critic reviews and I'm not seeing anything terrible, maybe they're just playing it safe. I don't know. But. I can't judge until I see it for myself. So. I saw, you know, looking at the preview, I thought it looked it looked cool. If um, you have seen it, let us know. Yes. Let us know your thoughts. Well, that's the other problem now with these films is the, I think the budgets are pretty high. Yeah. Which is like, let me knock that down a little bit, and you you can definitely get a pro- return in profit. Mm-hmm. Just focus on the writing, you know. It's like stop with these flashy gadgets. No one cares about. Kind of low. That's pretty low worldwide low. right now. Forty-five million. Ooh. Well, Terminator. Domestic, sixteen million. Ooh. Ouch. Terminator Dark Fate did not do good either, and I I heard mixed things on that. I guess uh, Joey liked it, um, but that's not doing too well. But I know I didn't get a chance to see it in the theater. It's just yeah, there's just too many movies out there. That's the, that's the thing. You kind of want to go for the guarantees. Mm-hmm. I do. I mean, I don't have. The luxury just to see a movie every week. I wish I did. That'd That's why awesome. I do my five-minute game on Netflix or Hulu or any other number of streaming sites where I'll watch the first five minutes of something and yeah. decide, do I want to put this in my list or not? You know, right. and it's easy. You can't go do that in a movie. Well, That's true. going back to Black Friday real quick, um, I never would have probably bought this, but it was on sale. The fourth Men in Black film. Oh, yeah. Just to complete my collection. Right. I've heard bad things about it. I'll probably regret it. So, but you have a collection. You're a completist. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably that's probably bad. <laughs> I should probably do that with the Harry Potter series. The you can buy the whole series now too. It's pretty reasonable. I well, think. I have I have all the originals. Oh, the Fantastic like, Beasts yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That I haven't oh. bought into. I mean, I've seen them and I think they're great, but I haven't added it to the collection because I, it's not the same world. I got the new Lion King for five oh. something at Walmart. They had a whole box full of them and. They had like a little sticker just written on there. And I was like, is this for these? Because yeah. you just had to like. Yeah. Some of that shit, like, again, Walmart, you had to guess what things were. It's like, all right, I had to go find someone to scan it. Like, yeah. It was just stupid. Like, have a, have a better system. Like, this sucks. 
You're Walmart. You're better than They're this. encouraging people for next year to not go there. <laughs> yeah, probably. See employees. Did, did the right. Walmart you go to, um, sorry to backtrack, have as many cops as the one that we went to in Ankeny? No, I went to the Jordan Creek one, and okay. it was the, it was nine o'clock or ten the next uh, Friday morning. Okay, so we went the Thursday, um, and it was still early. I want to say it was like seven ish to the Ankeny one, nonetheless, none the none the less, and just a ton of um, really state troopers. Yeah, and a lot Ankeny. of chalk outlines. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Um, they were everywhere. Really? Yeah, everywhere. A lot of so, shoplifters, maybe. I don't, it's Ankeny. I don't know. That's weird. Really? Yeah. So, oh, they're just bored. Yeah. They're waiting for their donuts to get done. Well, they had SWAT at the <laughs> South Side one. <laughs> probably did. The FBI was there. <laughs> the DEA. Probably be more apropos. There's dudes in jackets and But you don't sunglasses. have uh, any of that at Target. You don't have any. Oh, you don't see You just really. have their normal security staff, and that's it. And that's... Uh, I mean, they don't carry any sort of weapons. No. So kindness. They carry kindness. They carry kindness. It's a guy named Chad wearing regular clothes. <laughs> the big beard. Yeah. <laughs> With one of those big stupid hipster beards. They don't check your receipt when you walk out the door like they do at Walmart. Yeah. Or they have to scan it. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't happen at Target. Go to Target. Go to Target. This is brought to you by Target. <laughs> this is brought to That'd you. That'd be a home sponsor. Are we allowed right? to say that? Sure, I don't care. This episode was brought to you by the Target. Target. Well, this came out of nowhere. Star Trek Four is back on the table. It seems, yeah. Which I was surprised. I thought it was pretty much dead. There was I'm talk very about, happy about that. Yeah. Was, there was talk about the Tarantino one. There's still. It's still on the. Is it? It's still a possibility. So Noah Hawley, who does Legion and Fargo for the FX network, he also yep. directed a movie called Lucy in the Sky. Oh, okay. Not, I didn't catch that one. See? I'm sure that song was in it. But yeah, Legion's a very trippy show. And so he's in final talks to write and direct Star Trek Four, which it seems he'll be taking over the JJ role. Right. I think JJ is moving over to like Warner. Okay. Him and his uh, bad robot empire. But JJ still could be involved with the Tarantino, possibly, because he helped get that to the table. Right. So, but yeah, it's uh it's been since twenty seventeen. We had Star Trek Beyond. And it introduced uh, Jayla, played by Sophia Botella. Yes. Which, that was a great character. Great role. Yeah. If anything, I want to see her again. Yeah. I think that'd be really Totally cool. worth it. We got a new Enterprise A, which, not bad. Yeah. I'm kind of, you know, uh, since it's, we've had so much time, and I pretty much thought that J.J. Burst was dead, and in a way it probably is if this guy takes over. I was just kind of like, I just wish we could go back to the um, original movie timeline. Yeah. You know, those ships, like, let's just, it's all there. Like, right. let's just utilize that and try to tell us, tell us a tale about another crew or something, you know. But they were saying that Tarantino may be a spinoff, and I thought it'd be cool if if the spinoff maybe was, like, Sulu on the Excelsior, because that oh, was yeah. a huge missed opportunity. Right. They should have had a series or That would have been movie. cool. You know, you could still have Chris Pine in there, just kind of like, you know... Yeah. And send it to another ship. Yeah, so you're excited about the Star Trek. Very much. Yeah. yeah. I am too. Yeah, a lot of Star Trek. Great cast. Coming our way. Yeah. yeah. So I thought so. I'm anxious for a new director, writer. Although JJ didn't really have much to do with Beyond other than produce it. Right. It was probably the closest to Star Trek. Yeah, uh, it was really good. They even had photos from the, the original cast. Uh, so that'd be exciting. It's very early stages, so hard to tell when it will uh, come out. More to come on that, I'm sure. You that Trekkies. Was even a possibility. Have you ever seen a Star Trek movie or show? We should give you like a list. It's like in my bones, the resistance to watching that, and I don't know why. Because there's no wizards? Uh, no, well, I like Star Wars, but I grew up with Star Wars, so. Yeah. And I remember seeing bits and pieces of the show and not liking it. And then. Yeah, it's all right. Most, I, most Star Wars fans aren't smart enough to appreciate Star Trek. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just they kidding. love opera. I'm just reason. kidding. That's another good point is um, Star Trek's never really been, like, it's it's huge, but it's never been, like, a big box office draw. Well, know, well the that and, you know, and, and to your point, though, too, it's so vast, mm -hmm. it's almost hard to just dive in. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it really is. Without um, it becoming, like, an action movie. Right. Which the TNG ones would do that. The original ones were 
comedic. Star Trek Four is like everyone loves that one. That's where they save the whales. That Spoiler. one's very yeah. That one's very much a standalone. Anyone can enjoy that. Um, Not as sci-fi. It's like they're out of time. It's yeah. Really. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, I guess I didn't. So they started off as a a, a show. Yes. And back I back in the sixties. Yeah. And I didn't. I nope. Um, whereas Star Wars did not. Right. So, and I remember, even though I wasn't alive when they came out in theaters, I remember growing up watching those in the house mm -hmm. and being like, this is, I've never seen anything like this as a young yeah. child. And just, and so I was able to build that world a lot quicker than, you're right, than being part of the... Yeah, and, and, and so, I mean, I get that. I mean, yeah. I grew up watching Star Trek, mm -hmm. and, and so it was easy for me to get into the movies because I've already seen the TV the show. shows. Yeah. You come to, like, like the cast, and then you get to see them older, come right. back to their parts, and... Now, the beauty of it is, is it's all available on streaming now. Yes. I mean, all the shows, everything. So, I mean, you know, if you ever... If anyone's ever interested, I mean, there's there's good jump on points, but it, it is it can be daunting. There's a lot of episodes, but if you go out there, you could probably find a good top 10 list of yeah. original series or TNG. But for its time, though, it, it didn't really disguise social issues, you know, with yeah. like civil rights, but it wasn't all, it wasn't really just like, you know, pounded into you. Yeah, it wasn't in your face, but it yeah. also, it did address it in a, in a roundabout way. Mm. Like TV's first interracial kiss was on Star Trek, mm. you know, uh, Kirk and Uhura. And, you know, they, it was a first diverse crew, you know, I mean, it was just, very um it was very progressive you know but yeah and there was an african-american woman in yeah. charge of communication like it's yeah. a big deal and she was in the future before that you didn't really see any black people in the future no that was like a game changer right basically. and then on tv if you saw them they were you know maids and you know just right. other right. horrible roles right and then star wars has lando yeah that's it <laughs> no i'm kidding is that kurt <laughs> up there no that's data Oh, I see. I don't That's know. That's my picture of Data with his cat. Know. Spot. Yes. I, I drew that. No, I'm kidding. I wish I did. I wish I did. I, that's, that's the Enterprise right there. You got that poster, Steve. I think I, I gave you one. Yep. Yeah. Finally put it up. Yeah, I'm, I'm slowly decorating around here. So, I got, I got Justice League in the back. Yeah, I see Half that. Half like looking right at you. Your boy. Oh, about that. You my boy. But if they, if they keep the Star Trek films, other people have said this, um, they keep them lower in budget yeah just focus on the writing you probably can't have as much flashiness but i well, don't know it just has to that be that cast is so good mm -hmm. yeah i don't think you need all the flash yeah. and chris pine's great i mean it just that whole cast is pretty Carl slick. urban yeah oh god well, godot is on that poster <laughs> oh you have to put your specs on to see it though oh daddy likes <laughs> <laughs> That'll be out soon, too. Lord help us all. Wonder Woman 84. Yeah. That's exciting. Well, moving on to Star Wars, uh, big bombshell. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy, who runs everything, practically, um, basically was saying, well, they don't have the ability like Marvel does to pull from comics and novels. And most fans were like, pump the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, you probably know more about... A lot of Star Wars novels out there. Mm. Different authors, different story arcs, different time frames. Um, I mean, anything you want from a Star Wars perspective can be found in novelization form. You know, Old Republic stuff, you have the new stuff, post-Jedi, Clone Wars. I mean, everything is in there, and, and there's a million great original stories, and millions of huge exaggeration, obviously. But uh, there's a ton to choose from, you know, so I don't know... If that was just like a generalization type comment as, you know, because compared to maybe Marvel's library of backlog versus even the Star Wars novels. Okay, fine. I get that. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot to choose from. Yeah. So. I don't and know. that was a, I mean, George Lucas would have, I mean, he, he signed off on most of those, did he not? Back then, yeah. Yeah. Because I remember yep. seeing like the front, like a George Lucas that's what sucks about egos like these new people take over and i guess they're hired to bring their vision to it but it's like most of this shit's already done mm -hmm. like just yeah. grab and adapt it to current times i guess or your or your own ideas go with that don't have to come up with something whole you know totally brand new especially if you want to roll these films out like they did originally right and then bob Iger's like well we got to stop now which i think is just stupid one name thrawn thrawn Oh, yeah. From right. the books. 
I mean, he was a book creation, Mm -hmm. you know, Timothy Zahn wrote those novels and there's been a lot of novels now by him. It always includes Thrawn usually. That's the blue dude, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and and those were the, probably the most critically well-received novels, Mm -hmm. you know, that itself should have been made into a movie, but you know. I don't know is. why I have this phrase stuck in my head with "Let the Wookies win." Like, <laughs> right. In my head right now. <laughs> yeah, there's so much they. There's a lot to choose from. Build up the mythos there. Right. Why would you not utilize all that? And it's probably maybe they don't want to pay the rights to it or something. I don't know. But that's just silly. It's like it's easy to dismiss bad ideas when you're not open to include old yeah. ones that could be expanded on well she's just uh, i think more and more people are pushing her to mm-hmm. like leave and they want favreau to take over <laughs> yeah because of the mandalorian which we'll talk about pretty soon here um just seems like she's a little out of touch right and maybe just not that was a dumb statement to totally me. invested yeah, yeah it really was yeah fans just jumped on that like yeah. what even the video p- games have cool storylines right was that another studio pr thing I think it was like a roundtable discussion. Oh. Yeah. She was quoted saying... It was just dumb. Just like, really? Uh, you got enough people probably hate you right now. <laughs> Why would you want to make it worse? Because, you know, she's fired several directors. People still want to see the, the solo film done by the Lego movie guys. Yeah. Just to see if it would have been better. I don't know. And I liked solo as it was. Yeah, I didn't think <clears throat> it was bad. Just to further the generational... Jesus Christ. Thing, uh, my daughter had asked for lifesavers for Christmas. Really? Mm-hmm. Lightsaber? Yeah. I thought you said lifesavers. No, that's a candy. Candy, yeah. I, I heard lightsavers, yeah. but I, I used to say that before I knew lightsabers. See, that, I, I the, general, the generational <laughs> gap is I'm so old, I thought you said that, but I didn't hear it that's probably Yeah, that's probably my uh, thing, Steve, too. did you leave your hearing aids at home? What? Did you? Did, did you leave your hearing aids at home again? I can't understand a single word she's saying over here. <laughs> That'd come in handy for Black Friday, right? If you just turn it off. Yeah, like, actually, yeah. And anymore, um, you can control it from your chest. So they have like really? a thing. Well, not in your chest. No, no, no. But I mean like a little dial yeah. or something. Yeah, or? So like my, Darth Vader. So <laughs> my grandfather has hearing aids, but he wears this thing around his, like a necklace. Oh, I see. And I he see. can just... Yeah, he can just turn it on and off if he wants to. In the last year, my hearing has... Really? Yeah, bad. Left side, I it's bad. Oh. Really bad. I mean, I was sitting at lunch with someone at work, and we were sitting at a bar eating, and she's on the left side of me. And the entire time, huh? What? Yeah, you it just was just, nodded your head. It like, was ridiculous. Sure. <laughs> yep. What are you going to do about it? He's going to get hearing aids I'm and he's going, going to, to wear enjoy the, the silence. Is what I'm going get to do. Get one of those horns from like Civil War. <laughs> <show your ear. laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to enjoy the silence. That's what's going to happen. You're going to die really early. Oh, that's the yeah, goal. That's the plan. That's the goal. That's, uh, we're, that's, but you yeah. have all these movies coming out. We're shooting for You don't want to pull a Queen Elizabeth and just. Is she a robot now? Like, is she a cyborg? <laughs> She's got to be. What is she, 93? Oh, Look at her husband. God. He's still around. They're both cyborgs. He's they had have like, to be. yeah. Well, there's, there's no way. It's that pampering, you know? You just don't do shit and just dress up and. <laughs> and they, Pretend to be important. They I inject do that you every with day. shit. <laughs> yeah, don't we all do that kind of thing? <laughs> you, you make press statements about every decision you make. Except we have to do our own laundry and stuff. We do. So, I mean, yeah. And cook her own food. Maybe they do too. Wouldn't that be funny? No, I don't think she's ever seen an inside of a kitchen. <laughs> what is this? Without touring it at <laughs> yeah, the right. facility. Yeah. <laughs> what is this machine? I've never seen this it's before. It's a toaster. <laughs> that's, a sp- <laughs> that's a spoon. <laughs> What's it do? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I was going to thump your head they in a minute. They don't even turn up their own televisions for uh-uh. the crown. I don't know if that's legit, but like they have somebody off to the side. And they kick somebody. And they, they turn like, up. That's what yeah. they said. He yeah. just turn it up and he turns it up. Turn up. I mean, yeah. Oh, God. I want that job, though. Me too. Because how hard can that be? And the job security's got to be pretty good. I am the royal volume adjuster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Unless, well, you all have commercials come on and those are usually louder. So they're going to have to, you're going to have to turn, it turn it down. down. Right, yeah. Somebody Sit back comes, down. Turn it up. Comes in in the morning and opens your curtains and <laughs> exactly. brings you your tea and... 
They the whole help thing. you get dressed. <laughs> you don't have to dress yourself. They the whole thing. You out, grab your yeah. joints. And... Yeah. <laughs> They run you on the treadmill. There's like four guys, <laughs> one on each limb. <laughs> That's, they run on the for her. That's she right. Watches. Yeah, she watches. she watches. The Diet Coke. <laughs> How many steps do I have in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm doing good today. Very good. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know if you've caught the Mandalorian, but uh, we've we are fourth episode in. Yeah. Have you watched any episodes yet? Uh, no, because you guys already talked about it. I mean, I will. It's on my list. It's amazing. I mean, it's on my Disney list. Well, that's why I think people want John Favreau to take over. It's just like his vision, and it's very close to I think what everyone loves about Star right. Wars. And I so, it, when you guys put me on the spot like that, because a, it makes me feel like I don't contribute, and b, it makes me feel like I'm not a true Star Wars fan. You haven't seen it? No, not yet. It's on my list. There's a lot of. I just finished The Crown. Come on. <laughs> so, Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> Episode four just came out. Yes. Um, so spoiler free because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who may or may not has seen it. Um, I've seen the memes. I know enough. You know enough. Um, so Bryce Dallas Howard directed this episode. Yeah, I didn't know that till the end of yeah. it. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Very good. Yeah. Um, I watched Can I it again. Ask what was her interest in doing that? Her dad. I Probably don't know. her dad. He did solo, and I don't know. Maybe that was his deal. Like, I'll do solo if you let Bryce uh, direct it. <laughs> well, it, I mean, she nailed it. I mean, it was a really cool episode, very much a standalone mm-hmm. type episode. Yes. Um, I mean, with threads from some of the other things happening, but uh, it was, you know, I could very much watch uh, Adventures of Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. Oh, of course. You know, going yeah. planet to planet and doing whatever they're doing, but. Uh, it was really cool. And then, um, what is the actress, the MMA fighter lady? Gina. I don't know her name either. So I don't know her name either. Um, starts with a C. Carano? Gina. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, she was awesome. Yeah, she was. She was she really was. awesome in a yes. very good role. And uh, I can't wait. I just can't. I mean, she's in three episodes this season. So I know we'll see her again, obviously. Sure. But yeah, so it was a. But it's a lot of fun. I mean, just an amazingly well put together episode. And do you dislike the run times on these episodes? Or do you think they're just right? I dislike them because I want more. But if mm-hmm. I was objective, I think they're just right. Sure. You know, and so it's selfish that I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, it's good. You know, and it is because there's such short run times. It's very accessible to those who haven't seen it. And um, uh, oh, I'm I sorry. Uh, no, I, I will be uh, watching it. I was just talking to Josh over here. Oh, um, <laughs> well. As I look at you, <laughs> I have an excuse. I was finishing. You haven't finished the Crown yet. No, I so haven't. I was finishing the Crown. It's longer show. So they are. They're like 45 minutes a piece. I think the last one was a little bit longer. The longest episode of The Mandalorian was 42 minutes. It might have been this recent one, maybe. Yeah, they're very short, but yeah, they do leave you wanting more. How many episodes left do we have? Do you recall? Is it eight episodes total? Yeah, okay, so we're, we have so four we're more. at the midway point. Yeah. Almost a play on the Thanksgiving theme Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. It was interesting. Yeah, that was kind of a good good timing deal. Yeah. It? Yeah. I was I was up late, and I was like, should I watch it? Like, yeah, I should watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. I watched it uh, with Terrell last night. My second time, his first. Yeah. But, yeah, I... Uh, more him being a filmmaker more. what do you think of it he loves the mandalorian yeah he he mentions the budget you know yeah. um and you know he he has a different eye than i do when of he's course. looking at things but uh yeah he loves the show and like everyone uh he likes baby yoda as well yeah. so do you um, think he should ever take his helmet off if they do, I think they should follow what he wants to follow as a character and not mm-hmm. you know, be exposed with it off. I mean, maybe seeing him in a room by himself or something with it off. Right. It, totally acceptable, I think. But, right. Even though this last episode we kind of got something, I don't want to say it, right. but yeah. You know, and then if, and if they don't, okay. Mm-hmm. Who cares? You know, but if they did, don't screw it up for the guy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's Jar Jar Binks. Right. <laughs> and I know people are talking about the canonical differences between, like, Star Wars Rebels and, and what he's doing. Right. Because um, the character in Rebels, you know, she takes off her 
helmet all the time. It's right, off and on. Right, and then Boba Fett, or no, Jango Fett uh-huh. in the prequels yeah. too. So maybe it's another uh, tier of the uh, religion. Yeah, who know. knows? I don't know. Or those two, are, or those other ones are just not really dedicated that much. Yeah, they, so they don't go to church every Sunday. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's a good explanation. That's a good explanation. Well, I'll watch it. That'd be great. Yeah, I'm I'll proud do that. of you. I'll do that for you. And before Good you know it, we have uh, yes, we have you Rise like... of Skywalker coming out very soon yes. as well, which that's crazy. Oh, I cannot wait. Can't believe it's already the conclusion. So much on like the line. A very it seems. short run, doesn't it? Yeah, especially when they're saying they're not going to really make any more films. I know. Which the prequels I, who knows? Were so much longer. Who knows? They might. They're probably just. I, I think they're trying to pull. Well, they'll make more films. They're just not going to do any more Star or Skywalker right. focused films. Is this going to be like a very rushed conclusion? I mean, I don't I feel like it yeah. might be. Yeah, I do too. Um, I think they're just maybe course correcting so much from the last one just because it didn't. JJ, I think, had a better, or not a better, uh, different plans. Uh, but he, you know, he got out of it. Like bringing the Emperor in feels kind of desperate, but I'm sure they'll handle it. Hopefully they'll handle it well. I've heard they've shot so many different endings to it, and even yeah. they might even still be shooting. Like it's really down to the wire. I don't know. I think they're just it's just odd. Yeah, it's like so much is on the line. It just you feel like this one could because Solo I think broke that whole like oh yeah they're always gonna make money and da da da. And... It just seems odd to me because they're bringing in new characters. Mm-hmm. But they're going to end it by bringing in new characters. I think those characters could. Those too? characters, I think, they are going to carry go on. on. Yeah. yeah, just okay. the Skywalkers, like that's that piece of be it done with. Yeah. Oh, okay, because you said that was like going to be the end. Like they're not going to make any just more. Just the Skywalker so saga, yeah. then. which they rebranded the Skywalker saga. Never. Like I'd watch Finn and Poe, or you know, I'd watch the, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. So. And yeah. Ray, but she'll die at the end, so... You think so? Yes. Yes? Really? Yep. I really don't think so. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I, evil... I am excited to see how it comes out, though. I mean, with the Emperor coming back, you know, I'm really on board with the Ray as a clone of the Emperor piece. And I think the the evil Ray we've seen is either like a... Um, uh, I think it's like a vision. A vision, yeah. or it actually is another clone of her. Like, he's tried, tried it out. Like Yeah. That's another possibility too. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll Are see we ever going to figure out why she's as strong as she is? Yes, I if hope she's so. Not a spawn Jeez, that's the whole. That's why herself. I think she's a clone of Palpatine, oh. the Emperor, because you know he's obviously crazy strong in the Force, and you know he's always looking for a way to live forever. And so, I know in the old school stories in Dark Empire after Return. He came back as a clone, and he transferred his consciousness into a bunch of clones. Oh. And those bodies didn't last long, and so, you know, some of the school of thought is that Rey might be an actual clone of the Emperor. Do you think Snoke might have been a clone as well? Possible. I don't know. Because he's kind of deformed, and it just felt like yeah, something like, happened Yeah, maybe there. whatever body he inhabited. That was got... a mystery they never really... <laughs> no, that was dumb. Yeah. Oddly enough, it was the same director who made this great film we're going to talk about soon, Knives Out. Yeah. Which, this The Last Jedi just, I think it really screwed with the fan base. Like, it was just people who, I mean, people probably fight over it just to death. Yeah. About what it means and what it doesn't mean. So yeah. on. I liked it. There's parts of it I, I wish were different, but yeah, I wasn't well, like, yeah, I I wasn't mean, like this uh, is terrible. Right. And every movie's got parts where I, I would, sure. you know, in retrospect, maybe think of something yeah, so Knives Out. Tell us about the film real quick. Uh, spoiler free, of course. Spoiler free. So premise of it and... if anyone has seen Clue, the old 80s kind of mystery whodunit based off of the board game, um, you know, that's got quite a cult following. And Knives Out is kind of a modern version of that. It's a, kind of a mystery whodunit type thing. A lot of star power in it. Jamie Lee Curtis, Chris Evans, Don Johnson's in it. And I will say the Tony Collette, Don Johnson... This guy's having quite the resurgence. I mean, yes, you know, is. Django Unchained, this movie, he was awesome and very hilarious at points. That's great. I mean, yeah, it was just worth Good. every second. Yeah, I did not want to go. I mean, I already went into it thinking this is going to be dumb. Mm-hmm. You know, I would rather go see Terminator. I'd rather go see anything. You know, I would rather watch Paint Dry right. than watch some stupid whodunit movie that looks ridiculous. 
and it was awesome. It was just it was a great movie. It's one of those where they have a huge cast and you're you're just hoping it's good. Right. Most of the time it's it's not. It Very well done. Deliver. Uh, I think Ocean's Eleven was the first film to me that delivered on a big cast. You know, yeah. it just everything was clicked and it was entertaining and how was the audience? Was it a packed theater? It was pretty packed. A lot of people laughing and Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people got into it. It yeah, was fun. That's cool. Yeah, I like those type of movies, so it's it's good to see another successful one. And, I, and Daniel Craig was amazing in it. Yes. You know, he was really good. And then I really liked it at the end when they were, you know, kind of wrapping everything up, mm-hmm. you know, and they pointed to things that had happened earlier in the movie. And it's like, man, this is smart. Right. You know, they did a real nice job. I feel like anything that he's in is good. He's, Have you he, ever he seen picks good him things. in Dreamhouse? I think I've mentioned this before. No, never did. It's such a good movie. He was in um, Road to Perdition, played yeah. Paul Newman's son. I remember that. He uh, Cowboys and Aliens. Yes. Underrated. I liked it. Yeah, that was a good one. It's it based a fun on a comic, right? Uh-huh. He was in Lucky, is it Lucky 7? Lucky number 7? That was a good film. He uh, he was like a, it was like an Ocean's Eleven, sort of. Same director, yeah. Steven Soderbergh. He had a southern accent, which I think he does. He in does in this movie, movies. too. Yep. And he looks like he put on some weight for it, too. It wasn't like James Chris Bond Evans makes seat. fun of him in a scene, and it's hilarious. Yeah. Chris Evans having fun, you can tell. Oh. It's, it's like throwback Chris Evans, because that's all he did yeah. before he was serious as Captain America or these other parts. Which, when he was originally cast yeah. as Captain America, I was really worried about... Well, I was, too. I was like, we're going to have a wisecracking jackass for Captain yeah. America. But he... he just yeah, he played a total respect. entitled asshole in this movie, and it was really funny. <laughs> he nailed it. It was funny. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, I want to go see it. You're probably going to see it today. Yeah. Uh, so Knives Out, yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to go check that one out. That was on my list. But unfortunately, I have kids, and this weekend it called for us to see Frozen 2. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. What did you think, Megan? Cause you, good. You... I thought it was a good movie. Yes. You like the first one? I like the first one. I've talked to a couple other people who went and saw Frozen 2 who saw the first one, and they were slightly disappointed because they felt like it didn't live up to the original. But nothing is going to live up to the original. Why even try? I mean, try, but don't expect. Yeah. It was a good um, sequel. So your expectations were kind of... I liked... I went in with none, though. That's the thing. Like, I went in with none, so that's probably why it was easier for me to accept than someone walking in being like, oh, it better be the better than the first one. Yeah. The, uh, the songs were a little weak, but there were at least I thought so too, yeah. one or two that I really, mm-hmm. really liked. Sure. So Animation's improved, even though it like, didn't need to, but there's did, some close-ups you're like, yes. oh my God. Did you see, so it was when Olaf and, um, and Anna were laying down in the grass how like realistic that looked, mm-hmm. like the dress would flow. I mean, it just looked... And the wind would blow their hair, yes. like little things like that. It yeah. looked real. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. It was cool. It's got to be sure. hard though for the song piece of it to follow up because that first movie. I mean, you that's know, the thing. Yeah, it's like there's no way you can top. And yeah, they really. There's maybe one song. Um, that was lightning in a Into bottle. The unknown. I liked yeah. that song. But my my kids love that first one so much, and they like they memorize like the movements of certain songs and it was cool to see them and they're older now so yeah. but they still liked it it was uh the comedy was still there i still feel like olaf was was funny uh, stupid humor maybe yeah yeah but yeah. i like stupid humor yeah. they expanded the mythos i think that's what a good sequel does is mm-hmm. expand the mythos of mm-hmm. of and it went dark a yeah. few times <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, it made the universe bigger, and uh, it kind of left it open like it, it could be the the last of it, or there could be more. It tied up some things that we didn't understand about the characters before. Yeah, I'll say that too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, no spoilers. Right. Yeah, because I do have a few problems with the first Frozen. <laughs> Mainly that twist at the end. That was dumb to me. The the dude out of nowhere. He's like, I'm a bad guy. I just felt like. The what? first movie, remember she was oh. engaged, that one guy, oh, yeah. on a whim, you know, and he always gave signs that he was genuine, and then because the plot needed it, he turned like that yeah. at the end to a bad guy. Uh, spoilers if Steve hasn't seen I've seen the first one, yep. I just felt like that was weak. It's like, they had a love triangle, and they're like, uh, how do we get out of this one? This guy's bad. Yeah. Boom. There you go. Um, no hint until did that Did you time. like how it's summed up, and I think we can say this without... Um, 
giving out spoilers, the parents, because you never knew why they were traveling. Sure. And then you find out what it was that they were truly doing. Right. There was that cool theory. Do you remember that about the Little Mermaid? There's that ship in the ocean. She's like, that was their ship. Who knows? It doesn't make sense now because of where the ship is. Right, right. Yeah. But yeah, it did. It did. I think that's what a good sequel can do is it kind of um, organically expanded things. It didn't like... Make it like, oh, they're this all along or whatever. It just was like, yeah, I'll accept that. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. The, the songs, I'm just kind of like, either way, I'm just like, I don't want songs. Just let's just see the movie. I <laughs> yeah. like the songs. <laughs> I did, but I was just like, oh, that was good. Let's let's move on. Uh, <laughs> it felt like a long movie. I don't know how long it was. It but... was a long movie. I was just basically there for the experience of going to the theater, getting popcorn. It's all an IMAX. So the fun like, part. I'm home. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. The chairs. It's funny. Uh, I reclined my chair and this this like old lady next to me was like, you can do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell her how to do Let it. Let me reach over and show you, man. I didn't want to do that. But I was trying to tell her like, hey, you just, just push this button. button. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's even heated. See this little red button? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <I> what? <laughs> That's the heat button, right? Well, it's blue and then it's oh, yeah. red. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You can crawl, you can heat, but there's no vibrating. Please edit that out. <laughs> um, They're having a Fifty Shades marathon. Oh, <laughs> shit. We need a lot of cleanup crews. <laughs> Every seat comes with a towel. So they hand them out as you walk into the theater. Like, what's this for? <laughs> oh. You'll see. Don Johnson will pop up when his daughter's nude. That's my daughter. Oh, God. <laughs> Speaking of Don Johnson, does that not sound like a porno name to you? Yeah. It's not made up, is it? Don Johnson. I don't think it's made up, actually. I think it's that's like, his actual uh, name. Jeremy. Yeah. Ron it? Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. Don Johnson. The sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The Dong. Yeah. The do- Don's See, Johnson. Don Dong Johnson. <laughs> Live. That's no. Cheesy action porno movies. <laughs> Would you recommend people seeing Frozen 2 in the theater? I mean, I don't think you have to recommend it because you're going to see Everyone's going to see it. Yeah. I mean, it's already made. Oh, what was the last? I mean, it broke. How did it make money? It's not a comic book film. Right. Uh, sorry, I'm just being a jerk. Scorsese. Well, not to you. It's a Scorsese it's always comment. It's slightly. Yeah, we've had, uh, we've had two Mamma Mia's. Remember that? I yeah. love Mamma Mia. I'm not knocking it. I've never I'm seen either those one. They're not wearing capes in that film. Yeah, those were huge films. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've always had stinkers. And I think now that we have ones that are kind of a guarantee. Right. Why would you want to go with stinkers? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I would have come up with these numbers prior to. So just $580 million after six days Jeez. in release. Well, I think the first one... Made a billion, maybe? It this made one's on the track. Yeah. Which means there's going to be a third one. <laughs> Although Toy Story not. took forever to get their fourth. and I hope there's not a third Frozen. I feel like that's just overkill at that point. But that's just... I don't me. know what else they could do. I don't know. Kristen Bell's great. Yes. She is. I could watch anything. Yeah. Very talented. She has a very dark moment in that film. Does she? Yes. That's something that only, I think, adults will understand. Huh. I'm trying to... Think. In the cave. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That to me was very yeah. This very dark. I know. I was like, I got my wrist out. Was yeah, like... I was thinking suicidalish, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we boring you? I, I'm we've been so, up since five. It has nothing to so do with you. Sorry. Ready for us now? <laughs> okay. Tired, well, let's move all. on to the next topic. Because conclude with boring. comics. Does that sound good? Uh, sure. Steve's comic hour. Bookie books <laughs> hour. It's gonna be. This gonna be a <laughs> the shortest hour on the planet. Sure, um, answer. Still waiting on the next Superman issue where he reveals his identity to Which is probably going to piss everyone off. That's how he reveals. Did you I say reveals? Re- yeah. Uh, I was doing my checkoff impersonation from Star Trek. <laughs> he can't say his V's, <laughs> so he reveals. <laughs> Um, See that's how that's how deep we dive into Star Trek. Right. That's so the then I'm glad you picked that up. <laughs> <laughs> he reveals. <laughs> His identity in the next issue, so that's uh, going to be fun. I just finished reading a five-issue uh, miniseries with uh, Invisible Woman, Sue Storm, from the Fantastic nice. Four. Uh, it delves into her career as a spy before she was in the Fantastic Four. Oh, sweet. Um, it was really awesome. I was very... 
uh, much thinking, well, uh, how good is this going to be? It's going to be kind of dumb, probably. But, you know, like Maria Hill from S.H.I.E.L.D. was in there. The Black Widow was was in, in, uh, in an issue. And a uh, really fun story. So, I mean, you know, it's only five issues long. So is if it you, set in today's time? It's set time? in today's yeah. time, yeah. And uh, it, the, in a nutshell, it kind of... She's on a search for her former partner who kind of turns. Sure. And uh, it, it really... And it dives into her powers... Um, a lot more than making it seem like she just has lame force fields. I mean, right. she does a lot of really cool things. So the writing was really strong. So this is after the accident. Yeah. Oh, she becomes a spy for a bit. She. Well, she was she was a spy before. The, oh. Yeah, before she was in the Fantastic Four. Right. Right. According to the comics, I mean, you know, the new comics. Um, but Mark Wade wrote it, and he's a great veteran writer. That was really good. So wait, this is before the Fantastic Four? Nope, this is after. Oh, it's after. She's yeah, just it a... just flashbacks from before. Oh, I see. Okay, and it kind of okay. goes back and forth. Gotcha. But yeah, that gotcha. wasn't the one comic you showed me, right? Uh. Uh-uh. Okay, that's nope. different. That was she Blade was Runner. Oh yes, really okay. good one too. Um, but yeah, this one was uh, you know, I, I got the first two issues when they came out, and I bought the rest. I just hadn't read them all. Yeah. And then last night I. I, I started reading them and I couldn't stop until it was done. It was it was that good. Wow! So that's cool. Page good stuff. Turner. It was a total page turner. Well, we got um, Star Trek Picard coming next month. Yeah, finally on uh, CBS All Access. It's finally going to be rewheeled. Yes, thank you. <laughs> this is why we need video. Because there was no comments that needed to be made to that. It was just me shaking my head at you. How stupid you are. We get geez. <laughs> it's getting dark. I bought her McDonald's this morning. And right. Getting abused mentally. You like it. But yeah, uh, got Picard coming out, which there's a lot on the line for that, it seems like. I hope it's... I get, I'd like to see everybody back. And yeah. hopefully Worf, if the, if he's in there, he'll look like Worf. And we'll right. that new Klingon. I still don't... That's the biggest problem I have, I think, with yeah. the, the current direction. Like, no, not liking it. But yeah, this is IDW comic... Co-written by uh, Mike Johnson. He wrote the 09's Countdown comic. The right. JJ film. He also worked on the Star Trek Green Lantern crossover. Oh, yeah. Great, great series, by yes. the way. Yes. Comic series. Green Lantern came from Star Trek? Nope. They're crossover. their own separate things. They just uh, did like a Green Lantern meets Star Trek comic book. It was like a dimensional mm-hmm. thing. It was really cool how they. They've done a lot it. of those crossovers. Sorry. They even did yeah. like Doctor Who, I think, and TNG. Yeah. Um, my watch told me I just reached my stand goal, but I haven't been standing for like the last <laughs> hour and a half, so I think it's confused. <laughs> but yeah, this comic will tie into Picard. It's like you know between the events that happened right up to Star Trek 09 to now. Right. So you get to see him in his uniform, which they premiered. They showed. With that, that you know, yeah. sharp. I almost wish they would keep that for the new series because you've probably seen the new uniforms they yeah. have, which they're not terrible. But yeah. these, like, I really like maybe because they're so they only probably made one. Right, exactly. Because in the comic, everyone's wearing these uniforms yeah. and they're different color codes, of course. We find out Jordy LaForge is commanding Enterprise F. Yeah. And pretty cool. Picard's got his own ship. It's not an Enterprise. I'll leave that up to people to get the comic and find out. But yeah, this pretty much is a lead up to uh what Picard's all about where where he's where he's been and where he's you know yeah uh, introduced right. in this series so wonder if they'll do any flashbacks as well you know maybe it's kind of I don't know, do you like when they make you rely on a book or a comic to get more info or would you prefer the television show or the movie to like give you that that depends if a comic, well, I can't speak to comics, I don't read them. But a lot of times, um, if the book is well written, which usually they are, um, they're far more in depth. And so I would prefer that a movie uh, rely on that subject matter mm-hmm. rather than branching out on, on its own and making sure that they incorporate a lot of the pieces that made that book so great. Um, for whatever reason, Nicholas Sparks can't do that at all. His movies always come out terrible versus the books that he writes so minus the notebook because that one was a good one but anything after the notebook i feel like it was terrible if you read nicholas sparks interesting why, why don't you read comics um i just have it i guess oh, so you're not I like against read, it no no i do want to read the umbrella academy 
because I'm a huge My Chemical Romance fan, and that yeah. was written by Gerard Wade, and that was that was something he was into long before he started the band. He wanted to be a comic um, book writer yeah. and, and draw, um, and so he got to live out that passion shortly, you know, after yeah. the band, or I think maybe even during. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, so I might read that just because I'm a big fan of his and i think that like to get into comics being a female this is just my perspective uh you need somebody to trigger that for you you need something to trigger that interest and i think Mm. he he does that right because i think he's phenomenal in other ways Mm -hmm. right that makes sense like did did something trigger that for you when you started in comics like Uh, yeah actually and and it was a buddy Okay. of mine who recommended something to me and I read it and it was good. Mm-hmm. And while I was there picking it out, I saw something else. See. I'm like, Oh, let me see that. And I read it. And I'm like, Holy crap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this isn't just like beat em up smash up stuff. I mean, it was, it was like an adult yeah. themed comic. Like it was green arrow in the eighties written by Mark Grell. Oh wow. And it was very much grounded in reality. I mean, you know, like Superman didn't guest star in the book. And it's always been known that Green Lantern and uh, Green Arrow were best friends in, in, in the comic book world. Well, when Green Lantern guest starred, it wasn't as Green Lantern. It was as Hal Jordan, his, you know, that's who Green Lantern is. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, and they went on a camping trip. <laughs> so there was no superhero antics or anything crazy, right. you know. It was very grounded in reality, you know. Nice. So, I mean, to me, it was just like... This is gritty and it's really dark and it's pretty cool. And nice. I think, it, it, have you read any of the Umbrella Academy? Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, I think Joey has, so he could speak to it more than I can. But I, it, from what I understood, and I haven't read it, um, those characters are kind of dark yeah. and, and outcasts. So, see, I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. I need to catch that Netflix show because that's probably how I'll see it. Yeah, so I did watch an interview and it's not like he doesn't have a whole lot to do with that and it's not exact, oh he doesn't well it's not exactly like the comics oh okay so it's yeah. like a basically if I remember correctly from the interview what he was saying was they took that and kind of expanded on it yeah so they have like what most movies do they have um, just the uh, core concept yes the core yeah. concept mm-hmm. the base and then they expand off of that gotcha so. gotcha yep and I heard the have you seen the show The Voice uh uh-uh, uh but I heard that was good too I even heard that's better than the comic Really? Yeah. Just it, may, it makes more. Well, sense, and that can happen maybe. sometimes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, nice. you have a lot of people who think Lord of the Rings was better than the books, and a lot of people think the books were better than the movies. And you know, I mean, yeah. The movies were terrible. The the first Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah. Uh, the, you think these, of the Hobbit? Yeah. No, no. I'm thinking of like me fast forwarding through his long journey to take the goddamn ring to where it needed to go because it was so freaking long I'm like when are we gonna get there yeah that was a long, i actually fast forwarded i'm not kidding you it was more of an experience with those films like to go to the theater sit there yeah. with everybody and experience it like and watch was, the same thing was... happen for an hour well after i saw them i never saw them again i own them but i just I haven't seen I them watched again. them all. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I watched them all. But I may have fast forwarded just a little bit. <laughs> scene two to the last scene of the third movie. Where you're like, oh. <laughs> oh there we go. The Lord there of the Rings are. cast. Right. Yeah, that was Credits. pretty good. But I did see The <laughs> Hobbit. I saw that too. Yeah, The Hobbit was, it should have just been one or two films. That was silly to make it three. And I think that's just left a lot of people just... We're done. Well, of course, Amazon is doing the Lord of the Rings series. So now you have hours and hours and hours of It'll be a different content. concept, It though. will be. Yeah, yeah, of course it will. I, I hope they expand more on... Um, what's that world that Liv Tyler lived in? The elf. Elf the, world. Oh, yes, yeah. I love that. Maybe because it was... Arwen. Green and pretty and Orlando Broom was there and... I don't know. And Liv Tyler was there. And Liv Tyler was there. <laughs> I love her. That was my favorite part. She and it was beautiful there. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I, it's been a while since I've seen it. I watched the first Hobbit, and I was just kind of like... I was bored. Yeah. It seemed like every five minutes, they had to smoke their pipe in, in a table. I'm just like, well, I don't understand. Where's the action, or where's... <laughs> Let's get going, guys. <laughs> it's their version of Friends, like, in the coffee shop. Yeah. You know, they're just smoking their pipe at some table. Except no dialogue. It's just right. Like, yeah. 
Look around, guys. Look at all we did. It's Could this cool. be any more boring? <laughs> <clears throat> I will say that I, I f- will always favor uh, Dumbledore over uh, Gandalf. Even though Gandalf is wittier and slightly funnier. I bet they're the... Uh, they're the what do you call Dumbledore it? The, is uh, more of a father figure. Yeah. Something I lacked in my life. Those two of those characters were people crisscrossed all the time. Kind of like Webster and... Uh, um, Coleman. Gary, Gary Coleman. Coleman, yeah. Emmanuel Every, Lewis and Gary Coleman. Yeah, yeah, I think it's that type of thing. Like, they always, oh, yeah, he was he was in that show. Like, no, he wasn't. He was in this show. Yeah. I think that's with, with uh, the two wizards there. Yeah. It's like, they kind of very similar, but... They're yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. All right, All right. Yeah, much different. Well, before we go, uh, any recommendations? What's out there currently on streaming devices? It's been out for a year or so, but Bodyguard on Netflix, it's a BBC show. Nice. Six issues, or six issues... Six uh, episodes. I don't want to reveal the entire amount. <laughs> um, six episodes, and uh, it's. We just finished episode four. It was amazing. I mean, this show is just Crazy Town. It's very. Uh, I actually think Crazy Town is a show. It is, is it really yeah. on ABC now. It's based off a comic. <laughs> I've been saying Crazy Town since like I was that. I mean, that's, no, I'm sad. Yeah, they got right. it from you. I well. Any cool idea I've ever had, I've Googled, and it was done 20 years ago before I even thought of it. So, um, oh, But yeah, so no, that was a good show. Bodyguard was good. Nice. And then, of course, The Crown. we are uh, got a couple episodes left of that. They're only in season three, is that right? Yeah. The Crown? Uh-huh. Okay, gosh, I thought it's been on for ever. But it's so... Um, uh, I can't think of the words. I mean, it, I get why it's so slow. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so slow for those seasons, because they really do a phenomenal job. Right. Uh, well, and so much happens yes. in that history, you know. Yeah. So they really do a good job hitting those key moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and like you said, episode three needs to win an award. Um, yes, episode three of season three definitely needs an uh, an award. If you did didn't get teary either, you have no soul. Right. Exactly. Uh, and then uh, I think I can say this: Camilla makes an appearance in season three. I think that's the so next episode that we, we haven't hit yet. I think we're getting yeah. closer to possibly seeing Diana at some point. She's already been cast. Okay. Uh, wow. For next season, yeah. Yeah. So. So we're currently in the seventies or eighties with. Well, right now we end this series off in the seventies, okay. early seventies, if I'm not mistaken. Sixties. Right? We were in the sixties because that event well, happened. Well, sixty nine was a moon landing. Yeah. Does it? There's a few episodes left. It eventually jumps forward like it'll tell you like it sh- but i think season three started off somewhere in right. the middle of the 60s it did. Yeah. and then you fast forward to right. the 70s yes I see. yeah but so, they yeah. do it in a way that you can't you don't it like it aligns yeah, the first it, two seasons time jump as well not so much i mean Probably. they did to the point from the inception of her becoming the queen mm-hmm. to you know a few years into it probably yes right um, I need to check that out. I've, I'm uh, telling you, it, uh, this was another thing that I, I've thought, I'm going to watch it so she'll watch something of mine. Right. Because this is going to be the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I can nap, and if I adjust my arm this way in the chair, she's not going to see my eyes. Yeah. You know, it was one of those shows. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was amazing. I mean, yeah. I, I ended up just, I was blown she away. She ended up napping. <laughs> You're like, hey, wake up. That is actually true. I don't know how many times <laughs> she's fallen asleep during the show, and I'm like... If you don't wake up, I'm finishing it without you. Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. Because it's really that good. It is. I've done that with Steph before. Like, she'll go to bed, and then Am- uh, Netflix likes to do that. Are you Keep still watching? watching? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's just, like, counting down. I'm like, yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, That's awesome. I haven't seen... I've seen the first episode of uh, Apple's C, and that was given 7.9 stars on I am... D B. I always want to say the B before the D, and I think it's because it's phonetically it should be B before D, but <laughs> uh, not phonetically. I think that might be worth checking out. Maybe I don't know. It's got Jason Momoa in it. If you're a Jason Momoa, fan. what's the premise of that show? Uh, don't reveal too much, though. I don't. I want to. Don't make reveal. Sure. <laughs> don't reveal. Uh, I would rather just nuclear whistles. Right. Say this correctly. So it's about the cornfields of Iowa being like an ocean, being like manure and. <laughs> Yeah. Um, throwback. Throw up throwback. Two episode whatever. Um so it is hold on, I had the premise. 
It's basically about um, a, a civilization who um, has lost their eyesight. No one can see. Oh. So they're forced to um, find other ways to exist in a world without sight. Um, until there are, I think it was like two twin, two twin, I want to say two twin girls, maybe two twins who are born with sight. So, um, kind of a sci-fi drama. Really? If you're into that. Interesting. Um, I'm assuming it's probably, they've got like an evil versus good element to it. Sure. Um, so it's, I think Jason Momoa plays more on the good side, obviously. And then there's this lady who I can't remember her name because I haven't seen enough episodes. Um, maybe check that out. Also, Dakota Johnson. No, she's not in that. Don Johnson. Don Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie Griffin. <laughs> is it Griffin or Griffith? Griffith. Griffith. And then the other one I'm interested in seeing, which I talked to you guys about, is uh, the Servant, which is an M Night Shyamalan film. If I can say that correctly. Film or show? Show. Show. He he actually did the show, or he's producing yep. it. Yeah. Nope. Um, it's uh, from M Night Shyamalan Servant new series. Really? Oh. I, it's definitely got a um, horror feel, feel to yeah. it. Did you see the? I did not. You need to watch it. It's got a um, it's got a horror element. But anything he does kind of has a spooky yeah element to it. Sure. Um, I love the vibe of his stuff. You yes. know, it's really cool. That some of the his stuff is like the whole um, what was that series with like the the staff? Um, I can't think of it. Some of the stuff he wasn't wasn't great, but yeah, he's had a few. Well, he's had some stinkers overall, yes. but I, I still think the production quality of his stuff is always very solid. Well, he, yeah. he writes a lot of his yeah, stuff. Yeah, he writes almost if not all, all of it. Yeah, I, was say, I think yeah. so. Right. So I haven't done enough research. Maybe next time we come, I come on, I'll give you more info on whether or not if you wrote it and sure. then how it panned out. Uh, I also have a Christmas wish. Uh, and that is that Mitch and Joey and you and I, we all come back to do a holiday episode because that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. We'll do some caroling. Yeah, let's do that. And uh, say we, didn't, uh, say you, we... Won't, you won't show up because you're a dick <laughs> and you're wearing a pirate's hat. Pirates. <laughs> did I show up today? Yeah, you did show up today. Did I show up the last time you were here? Yeah, you did show up the last time I was here. Case closed. Boom. Shaka laka. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a holiday episode. Sure, that'd be fun. Can we Christmas Carol? Sure. Have Joey lead. I will not participate, <laughs> but I will listen, okay. and I will enjoy it. <laughs> he can clap. When we're done. I'll clap. I have good rhythm. I while, just can't while sing. We sing. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> I'll play. Wrote. I'll play the vibra slap. What's that? So, like in some of the songs, when you hear a, a, a noise and it kind of goes, it's so like the more cowbell. Right. Yeah. Kind of like that. More vi- more vibrant slap. Vibra. Slap. Vibra slap. Yep. That's interesting. We'll bring that. Definitely. Yeah, bring your vibra slap. <laughs> I'll bring my vibra slap. Um. <laughs> Let me check out Titans on DC Universe. That's a really good. That's show. a good one, isn't it? Um, That's another cross generation show. My daughter talks about the. Um, actually, I think they have it as a kids show. I can't. Yeah, ti- Teen kid, Titans. Teen Titans. She loves Go that. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one definitely is not a kids show. It's no. dark, but it's good. Like she remembers this podcast based off of a time that we talked about Titans. Oh, really? And in her brain, she was like. You guys talked about Teen Titans, and that's how she remembers the show. Kind of. <laughs> They're older now, doing more adult things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that thingy. <laughs> I remember. I want ten that. hours of that on YouTube. <laughs> hey, you could probably find it. Uh, but that's what a virus slant. You should. Break, do you have one of those? I don't. In your basement at home. I don't. Okay. Um, and I'm acting all cool like I know the name of it, but for years and years and years, I had no idea what it was called. <laughs> and so I looked up percussion instrument in Sweet Emotion. <laughs> oh, my God. I know it was oh, in the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so finally, yeah, I'm like, oh, so that's what that's called. Real quick, you can edit this out, but I would just like to talk about how 80s is making a comeback in, in our music right now. A lot of songs that I'm that I'm hearing... 
like mainstream music wise has a lot of like synth synthesizer elements synthesizer to it. yes that too like the weekend came out with yeah. that new song and that has a, a huge 80s feel to good. it good good hey bring back the goodness of yes. the 80s there's a lot I of music i was that's... a big 80s fan yeah, yeah. growing up in I'm the 80s. have you guys heard it no. no have not you can stop it if you want to i just want you to hear the beginning how 80s ish it sounds wow Wait for it. How 80s is that? That's cool. Very. That's like Stranger Things. Sounding. Yes. Oh, shit. What? Right? That's good. That's like it's a... So this 80s. is 1983. This is exactly what it is. This is like Shakedown, Takedown, your yeah. brother, Bob Seger. It's like that's I heard, 80s right I there. Heard entirely. That's what I was like, oh, and I'm get the beats. I get that I was only born in '88, but like the most of the music that I grew up with was '80s music because mm -hmm. that's what my parents would listen to. Right. And I'm a huge like '80s fan, so for them to start to bring that back, that's awesome. Like I have such like a gives me goosebumps. There's I'm a lot like, of cool yes. artists doing that now. They're yeah, yeah. using utilizing old methods and mm -hmm. you know it's like people go back to the '60s and '70s oh, and yeah. things and. A lot of that techno shit doesn't... I don't think it lives up too well. You know, yeah. I listened to, like, a song the other day I thought was really great in early 2000s. And uh, remember DJ Sammy? Mm, no. I don't know. It was terrible, though. <laughs> I don't either. Oh, know. I obviously I don't only, know who that I only is. liked, like, one or two songs of hers. And they were, like... They are basically covers. Okay. So I listened to them again, and I'm like, my God, this is not doing anything for me. This is shit. Yeah. Like, it's just terrible. I'm like, wow, I thought this was good. Yeah. So 84-ish... Early '85, a lot of that new wave synth mm -hmm. stuff was starting to go softer yeah. and more pop, yeah, like friendly. And so to me, it just kind of was like Ugh, gross, right? But that reminds me of like the '82, '83 time frame, the peak, you know, like the Police, and you like know, like you're about to watch. The, it's like the start of an '80s film. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or um, it, it's a montage of some crazy antics mm -hmm. happening in the 80s right there yeah, yeah. Right, right it was really cool that was but it's cool. got yeah. like today's crispness to it yeah like, yes. this clarity like really yeah. pops yeah yeah that so was starting, that's nice and starting to hear a lot more of that and i'm excited keep it coming it. that's yeah. cool that i like that cool. that's really catchy that's the weekend yes i'll have to, I'll have to get that yes it's called um blinding lights nice i that's like cool. that that's cool it is yeah. that's cool i'm ready for it bring it on bring check it that on. out that's all i really have Okay. Anything else, have. guys? All Anything right. Else from you? No. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be back, and uh, we'll get that holiday episode going. I'll do a little Bing Crosby, David Bowie number. There we go. Perfect. We'll be back next time. I'm Josh. I'm Steve. Oh, I'm Megan. Jesus, that was so fast. I did it in the opening, too, but no, it was fun.